It reminds me of all the good times we had. Maybe I just didn't shoot you enough. Maybe you wanted to shoot me more instead. Flying without you is more than I can be. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Push to Talk. We have a very special guest today, CCP Rye. Say hi. Hey there, what's up? Yeah, we got the regular crew, Caleb, Scythe, and we've got uh, Mist Warden joining us today. Hello. Hey guys. And we got McLeod, not on video today, hiding over there. I am in hiding. Hi. <laughs> we almost had to, to, to listen to cool jazz and talk about Eve and, and listen to my neighbor's construction equipment, but uh, that seems to have stopped, and CCB Rise showed up, so we're all in good shape today. So let's, uh, let's start into it. Um, uh, so first of all, welcome CCP Rise. It's uh, great to have you on the show. We appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your evening to uh, attend. You got it. It's actually my morning. I'm on the West Coast. Oh, you're on the West Coast. I did not know that. Yeah, I what? bounce back and forth quite yeah. a bit. But you know, we have that whole thing. Everybody from CCP must be in Iceland, right? So. <laughs> yeah, most of them are. But so you got good weather out there today. It's beautiful. Yeah, sunny and wonderful. Good. I'm just gonna sit here. Surprisingly enough, it's actually quite sunny and beautiful in the UK this time. Mm. It's actually it's perfect a day out here too. too so. well, let's make sure to all stay at our computers and play spaceship. <laughs> yeah, of correct. Exactly. Um, I, I started that at 7:30 a.m. this morning, right up until we started rep getting ready for the show. What I want to know today, first before we start the show, though, is Scythe, what the fuck uh -huh. are you wearing a hat for? It's summer. because this my fucking hair is too long, and this headphone keeps grabbing it, and I need to get a haircut. I hate that. I, 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 I've experienced that, and I hate it too. So, uh, so my hair's like not even that long. It doesn't look long, but uh, these headphones they uh, they have very very good things. So if I do this, they don't move, and uh, it's grabbing my hair and yanking it out. Porthos says that McLeod has been hiding since the royal wedding. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. Yes, it's because they, they allow me that, they allow me internet picture. access, um, but you know. I mean, you, you did get the pudding picture that I, we uh, we really needed to really show the traditions of your country. Um, but, uh, we've only shared in our, our Discord. This, yeah, this is true, but like, you know, uh, the they, they allow me internet access, but other than that, I'm in solitary. He's like yeah. Edward Snowden. He, link, he, he leaked too much. <laughs> so the big topic today is... <laughs> is going to be the uh, the latest expansion from CCP. Like President Trump as well. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, Terrible. Fuck. Terrible. Hey, I'm trying to get through this show so I can go golf. Come on, guys. Wait, wait, hey, kill me. You didn't invite me again, you asshole. <laughs> you are always invited. Just take the I eight-hour drive. Drive together. eight hours to come there over go. there. Worth it. <laughs> so we uh we are we are privileged to have CCP rise here. We're going to have a little deep discussion on the Into the Abyss expansion, uh, which by all accounts that that I have heard, I've not actually played it, uh, has been pretty incredible. From from what folks uh, are saying, yeah. um, it's been it's been murdering just people. Right the sites. Yeah. yeah, you've been playing in the expansion. It's just not the sites. 
Ooh, Laughing Man, thank you very much uh, for that uh, resub. Eight months in a row, or nine months in a row. Sorry. Nine months, dude. Thank Allegedly, you. Uh, CCP Riot actually has a, a, a small story that uh, he might want to share with us. Uh, rumor has it that he was actually scammed. Is this true, right? Yeah, it is true. I, I pretty much scammed myself, and I I realize I shouldn't give too much detail about it because they'll figure out which like who my character is. But <laughs> basically, I ran out of contract slots, so I trade window scammed myself with someone else by accepting way too little for something I sold. Pretty stupid. Rip. <laughs> Rip, indeed. So but, how much did you get burned for? Uh, not that much. Only like half a billion. <laughs> I mean, you you can come mine in Delph. It's fine. Oh, fine. Yeah, I mean, we make that, make that in back. ten minutes. I made, in Delph. I made that in an hour earlier today. Yeah. I think it was ten minutes. Uh, oh well, yeah, that that's one rock that just would not go away. Well, that one's pretty nice. It was. It was a nice little. I just think it's rock. kind of funny that uh, one of the comments about the whole uh, Triglavian and Abyssal thing was uh, that it's going to be scam central, and then you come back and you actually get scammed. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, pretty typical. Pretty oh, much all I... of the things that are happening to like people who are screwing up have happened to me already in the three days playing since it came out. So, I was gonna say, you know, you you really haven't had the the full Eve experience unless you've been scammed. Yeah, definitely. I was scammed in the first thirty minutes of this game. I think I'm winning. <laughs> it's like I'm just I'm just gonna get it out of the way so it doesn't happen when I have a shot. Well, I, I didn't understand how the game worked, and some guy's like, "Oh yeah, you can loot that wreck. It's fine." And then he shot me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd been playing for maybe thirty Goodness. minutes. I, I, I didn't even know how to fucking target lock. Just out of curiosity, my my personal curiosity, uh, was it intentional that you guys brought uh, in the whole Triglavian thing um, without having any option or solution to? Uh, trading and, and contracting it because it, it's kind of bringing back that old shadow market where it's more based on uh, connections and personal trust yeah that's a like tough question I mean we wanted to do the item system I guess it wasn't like a you know it wasn't like a primary goal that we create a whole bunch of valuable stuff that couldn't be traded in the market that wasn't like what we set out to do necessarily um, but it's definitely something we understood would be part of the feature. And I think we felt sort of break even about it, like hoping that at the positive end, there would be, uh, like you're talking about some really interesting kind of interactions and, and new sort of roles created because of the emphasis on non-market trade. But also we're aware that at the negative end, there's lots of just plain crappy user experience associated with that. and kind of we didn't have i don't know some super clear um idea of how that would pan out or balance out in the end but we we're aware of both and hoping it leans more towards the side that's interesting well because uh, historically uh in the past when a lot of the items were not seeded on the sec market there was a lot of uh entities that uh, did a lot of third partying and and made a lot of money on actually trading rare items right uh something right. like big blue was uh pretty much funded by money from uh, from this kind of third party market stuff. So so it's definitely got some content potential. So I just thought it was kind of funny and interesting that there was this added uh, meta feature to the new uh, Abyssal stuff. Yeah, totally. I mean, we, yeah, I think it's interesting too. <laughs> Other than that, what's, uh, what's your take on it? Uh, how have you, you felt the, the reception and uh, is it being picked up uh, on the metrics as much as you've expected? I mean, yeah, we're super happy so far. Um, it's been getting constant and really high activity, um, which is great. And also just everyone seems to be really enjoying it. We kind of, I mean, we are trying to do a lot with this set of features, um, but the big thing that's really intimidating is we didn't know from the start sort of how much room there is to make replayable solo PVE that's actually challenging and interesting. And so seeing, you know, not only the fact that there's people who may have been running normal PVE content before who are happy to switch to this, but also seeing people like 
I mean, I was talking to Elise Randolph last night, who has literally not been sleeping because he's like so obsessed. Um, he's like playing until four in the morning and making like bad life decisions because of how excited he is about it. And to me, that's like really, really cool. Um, both because it's cool that people are using it, but also be cool cool that it seems like we've now sort of shown that it's possible for us to have really interesting uh, PVE, which is something that Eve's just struggled with. So um, as long as you, that holds up, you know, that's that's an awesome sign for us. Yeah, you've kind of hit that uh, casual crack mechanic, right, where people just can't stop doing it because it's just the, the right time frame for people to jump in and just do it. And then for people that just get caught up in it and get addicted, you can just keep doing it over and over and over again. It's very similar to what you see in, in other games out there. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, inspired to, uh, to see what you do with it uh, in the future and how you iterate on it, because it's definitely something that's got potential for very small uh, improvements and tweaks to make it even more fun, like allowing some level of uh, second or third players to, to enter the, uh, the dev space, right? Yeah, exactly. There's there's so many directions we can take it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't. That's something we're we're kind of we have to <laughs> talk a lot about still, because um, so much of our plans were based on how the reception went. Um, but yeah, we can do everything from expanding the content as it stands now to expanding to different ship classes to adding a lot of multiplayer, whether it's PvP or uh, more group type stuff. There's just like tons and tons of stuff we could do so um it's just nice that that this at least seems like a solid base for us to build from doesn't it open up to um the whole uh pvp experience of using a similar mechanic the whole thing that it's timed so there's like this window closing it's very similar to in other pvp centric games right so if if uh, if people are chasing each other into the, to to these dead spaces and trying to do PvP, they they are on a timer and they have to actually finish the the, the fight before the, the the window closes. Right? There's there's a lot of potential to to add a PvP element to this feature. Yep, absolutely. There's lots of different ways I could see doing it too. I mean, it could be more like some Dark Souls invasion mechanic, like you're talking about, where people are following each other in or or invading other people's. Um, encounters or it could be you know more like um there's just a chance of running into other people who are also uh running sites it could be more directly that you're actually heading in knowing there's going to be other people there there's like a kind of tons of very uh versions of that we we could go for depending on what we wanted and what players wanted and it could uh, it could kind of uh, be a, a way to to get out of the blobbing mechanic and and the whole uh uh, fear of, of doing a uh, small gang or solo PvP because you're afraid of, of this uh, escalation of a uh, huge uh, number of players just coming in and, and, and yeah, killing you instantly, right? This mechanic could pretty much make that option impossible, so it's more on fair terms, right? Yeah, but that's, I mean, we have to at the same time be careful with that. Like, um, it's always been tricky trying to talk about how to make a good experience where you're not just uh, kind of never in control and getting blobbed and feeling terrible versus making something that's way too artificial and doesn't feel like it belongs in EVE because it's not providing any emergence or any um, like real reward for being socially smart or for thinking about numbers well. Like Those are all big parts of um, what makes Eve different. And if I don't think that we want to just completely abandon that and uh, head into making, you know, perfectly safe queue up 1v1. But I don't no, know. No, I mean, but, it, but it, it, it's, it, it, it's a tough balance, I guess. Yeah, but it's kind of got the, the potential of use, reusing the feature to do some of the things that many players have asked for, things like the arena and things uh, in that whole uh, direction, right? Yeah, I mean, it totally has the potential for it. It's just a matter of finding the right, like, if we go that direction, finding the right set of mechanics for EVE, you know. Um, it, there's a ton of ways you could do arenas, and there's uh, a ton of PvP you could do in using this tech and this um, sort of stuff we've just made without making it arenas. It, we could do other versions of it that, that maybe are more um, sandboxy, I guess. And so What's the... What's the chance of uh, something like this expanding into exploration areas where you can actually go in and do longer uh, dead space uh, zones and, and do exploring inside the, 
the entity. I mean, totally possible. Not not something we're like doing right this second, but um, yeah, it actually connects. I mean, that actually connects to some longer term vision for the, for uh, the future that we were just trying to move in the direction of uh, with this release. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the potential is pretty wide. <laughs> I'm definitely personally very excited about it. And also because you're testing uh, features and technology uh, in EVE that uh, has a lot of uh, very deep future potentials. I was actually promising to only ask you one single question. Could we maybe get something like this uh, modification technology on blueprints in a, in a near future? Because that could bring in the whole competitive novelty thing that's been missing for years and years. The, the blueprints are pretty much stale because everyone's pretty much got them finished on, uh, on the terms of, uh, of research, right? And if it could be modded and tweaked uh, for specific uh, benefits or interests, then that would basically make uh, the whole market of, uh, of blueprints and blueprint copies a lot more interesting to the industrialists and uh, uh, the whole production uh, line. Hmm. I mean, that's not something we thought about. Um, it would have to, the way that the mod tech works right now, it'd have to change a bit because right now you can only use it on things that are basically use it on unassembled normal types and then it turns it into something unique. And right now we don't have it set up so that you can use it on something that's already unique. But uh, I imagine that wouldn't be too much of a stretch to do. Um, I like the idea. Yeah. It's yeah. just the, the classical uh, way of doing things like alchemy and painting the necessity for one uh, material or another, or the outcome to have a little bit of a different uh, benefit than, uh, than other ships. That's just something that would make the whole um, blueprint uh, copies and blueprint original market so much more varied and not this stale, uh, well, it's been stale for like 10 years, right? Because everyone's got the major things finished in the research mm -hmm. and it's, uh, an impossible game to catch up, right? Right. Well, yeah, it's an it's impossible hard. game. It's sort of an impossible game to catch up, but then again, it's one of those things where, like, if you are serious in, you know, doing manufacturing, you have to at least get to that particular, you know, that particular kind of, uh, you know, get over that particular wall. Yeah. And, uh, whereas... Buy stuff, right? It's just that the, yeah, this yeah. Uh, modification technology is so... <laughs> potentially interesting because it, it it makes it possible to not need a new end level tier because you're basically just tweaking and modifying existing stuff and basing it on doctrines and ship changes right so it's just potentially very beneficial to do something like that so i, I had a question uh, kind of about the launch of this uh this new expansion for a game that's very pvp oriented why did y'all decide to launch this new feature without some way to really PVP inside of these sites or that kind of thing? Um, a lot of the uh, kind of a lot of the why isn't this there questions, um, especially that one. Why isn't there some kind of PVP or at least some kind of co-op or or something yeah. is, is really just about scope. We we kind of did this whole feature in about three months, and when we started working on it, we had multiplayer both co-op and pvp as a requirement and then we just looked at the amount of time we had and what we were trying to do and it just was insane so yeah. um we cut it back to the most essential stuff and the pve really was the the kind of the the core of what we wanted to accomplish was have solo content that was extremely accessible across all of space um and across all kind of um skill tenure levels, levels like yeah skill yeah. levels and also make it um something you could do really quickly so that it's accessible regardless of your kind of real life situation or your playtime. Um, and then all, and then in, in apply all of this new kind of AI and um, enemy fleet spawning stuff that, um, that we ended up using. And we've been developing for stuff like the forward operating bases and the shipyards. That's kind of been the, the lead up to being able to have the technology for the way the NPCs work here. So we wanted all that stuff in and then everything else, um, you know, we ended up with basically the minimum version of getting that, those set of goals out the door um, and had to just trim back on all the other stuff because of because of how much time we had. Yeah, it's certainly, yeah, it doesn't look like a minimum deployment. I mean, it looks like it's fairly robust and, and people are really enjoying it. 
I wanted to uh, give Miss Warden a chance to ask some questions here because I know new folks into this into the show when they join are like, well, when do I interject? And we all uh, talk yeah, a just lot. wanted to actually touch upon the uh, PvP element. Um, TCP Rise, I heard you got shot when you came out of an abyssal site. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm like kind of salty. I don't know what to do because it's, I went pretty far out of my way to not be, you know, it's not like I was in Jita or something. And uh, I still, I and I had run uh, like four sites back to back. So I had a cargo just like super full of stuff and got ganked coming out. Uh, thinking I need to like hire some people to guard my entrance or something so that I can just run them in peace without having to worry about people killing me when I come out. Um, I'm also wondering actually, kind of more seriously, if we made it too easy to find uh, to find the sites and to tell if there's people inside that, I mean, it, once you find, find them, it's really easy to tell, obviously, if you can kill them when they come out. And because they can, because they show on D-Scan, it's just so easy to run through a bunch of systems and look for traces. So I need to get some, I don't know, deep safes or something so that it's <laughs> not quite as easy. And I, I, yeah. I mean, ever, there were so many people dying yesterday, you know, all the streamers who were running it, who were running fours or higher got killed. Um, I think everybody's well, gonna have to adjust a bit to stay safe. When you talk about of... deep saves, I mean, you mentioned the the the, the phrase deep saves. Yeah, it has been a bit of a uh, a bug yeah, it's kind of a it's, it's broken. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you guys are like you know going to be fixing that fairly soon or have a sort of a fix going with it. Yeah, as soon as we can. We uh we were looking into it at the end of the day yesterday, and it's not the most trivial thing to deal with, but we'll definitely deal with it as soon as we can. It's it's pretty busted. All right. So I'm not uh, gonna say. I'm not going to say what the bug is specifically because, you know, obviously that just means that yeah, just basically means. That. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I have a small one for, uh, that's pretty much on topic. Now, now you, you were talking about how this has uh, gotten people like Elise addicted. And I just read that article from um, uh, Hilmer's interview uh, that he's pretty much hooked and addicted to Eve again. Have you actually uh, introduced him to, uh, to the abyssal stuff and gotten him hooked yet? You know, I haven't heard if he's been playing it much yet. He, um, he's he been super busy traveling the last week or something, I think, so I don't think he's like sat down since we released. Um, he play tested a decent amount for us at the early stages, but it didn't have quite the same um, addictive quality it does now uh, at the super early stages. So he's seen it, but I'm, I am really curious to hear if uh, he ends up really into it once he tries it on CQ. We'll have to see. I actually have your graphic that you tweeted out, uh, CCP Rise, about uh, all the deaths since you mentioned everybody dying. I'm gonna I'm gonna flash it up here so for everybody to enjoy real quick here. So and we can talk about uh, it. Is it the Hilo one? Yeah, yeah, it is. So it's actually, that one. It's like all the all the Gila's uh, that were killed on the 30th of May, right? Just like right up through there. Um, I thought that was pretty amazing that there were, did, did they suddenly, everybody on the 30th say, hey, I'm going to play and then die or, or what happened? Well, there? the 20, we... so the 29th, um, when we actually released, uh, probably that stat for one is from when the server came up until midnight on the 29th. So it's only okay. half a day. That might be part of it. And then also there was a lot of, um, like a lot of people didn't have access because they either couldn't find it in the data sites and at the time the market mm -hmm. was you know super expensive so a lot of folks were waiting for prices to come down um so the 30th is the first like normal day in in both those respects but yeah the uh you know i mean anyone watching z kill knows that there's been a lot of uh a lot of deaths and uh looking at some internal stuff uh, if this if this stat can be trusted, which I'm not totally sure that it is perfect, because they've been ironing out some issues with the metrics, but it looks like we're at um, definitely over 10,000 ship deaths in the abyss since release, like not including the uh, any of the ganks at the exit traces, but just dying in the actual sites is is over 10,000. Well, damn. I was listening to the uh, the um, open com show last night and. And uh, Brisk was there from, you know, Initiative. And uh, he said that, I think it was him, and if I'm misquoting him, I apologize. He said this is some of the most fun he's had with PvE and EVE running these sites. 
That's and then great I th- to hear. And, and I think um, some other folks on the show also back that up. They just said they've been running them and they love them. So, I mean, if, That's if, awesome. we're, if we're gauging they're, they're, success, they're genuinely, well, yeah, they're, they're genuinely challenging. Like, I mean, I've heard of people saying that, like, you know, that they can't get past certain things because they just find it impossible. Like, I- I'm wondering, because there's, there's various different levels of this. Like, um, do you know if anybody has actually run, uh, an, like, a, the highest level site? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's people <clears throat> um, running them pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. consistently I've, at this point. Because I've, I've heard that, like, people have been saying that. I mean, you know, obviously not those sorts of people, but because they're keeping that under their hat sort of thing. But uh, I've heard people saying that the level, the highest level sites are literally impossible. But clearly no, they're not. No, no. They're definitely not impossible. Um, it might be that they're not 100% safe. It's, it's, you know, I could see someone saying that it's impossible to be sure that they will succeed. But I mean, you know, even uh, Suetonia put a guide up yesterday where he said he's run like 40 um tier five darks in a row without dying or something like that so there's there's plenty of people um uh consistently running them and then back to the just like fun pve what's what's really cool to me about um like the difference between other pve is that the decisions that that make this pve hard are more like actual eve decisions you know stuff like target calling and position management which hasn't been in a lot of pve before i think that's something that makes it a lot more fun to play is you just you're actually doing kind of solid eve combat stuff it has like real skill to it which is yeah. something you have to actually had. you have to really really understand your distance to various different things rather than just you know clicking to the clicking approach on the next uh like acceleration gate and just killing whatever's on the list yeah exactly so what you're telling me is my super is not going to help me rat hard <laughs> <laughs> if you could get it in there somehow it'd probably help i guess <laughs> squeeze it in <laughs> my amateur brain just made a dirty joke <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to say just quickly uh, that uh, to thank uh, the the uh, the inimical for uh, fifteen hundred bits. So I think that's equivalent to fifteen dollars. Yeah, I had to. I have that, that written was, down that was, to remind yeah. me. But yes, that was fantastic. Thank you. I and, took a drink for that. That was. That was and great. just to uh, just to to add in there a little bit, uh, if you want to donate to the stream directly, you can always click on support the streamers and big and purple letters down below um, to contribute to the show directly. Uh, we are starting a little bit of a uh, fun drive, trying to get everything uh, ready to try and do a, a podcast version of the show as well and host it out there. So um, anything you guys want to do, help us out. We'd appreciate it. All right. Um, somebody said in here, Roscoe said in chat, um, he was confused um, whether you had to find data sites in order to run them or to find them he said confusing and i'm not sure i got that question right but can anybody help us yeah with there's that? been there's been like it's taken a bit for people to to figure out what the deal is but all you need to run them is the actual item the filament so the thing that comes from data sites like that's the source of the tier one filaments uh actually it's one of the sources the other source is actually the abyssal dungeons themselves so once people got running them they're just now mostly coming from um, the abyss itself rather than from the data sites but the data sites are just the way to get the market seated to begin with and a way to get a filament if you're nowhere near a market um, but if you want to do it you can either just go to a market and grab uh, you know i'd start with a calm filament because they're the easier ones um, or you can yeah run data sites until you find one which will definitely take a bit more time but then yeah you just activate them from your ship in space and kind of the details about how that works are on the filament itself you can show info and see how it works on the one topic, something I want to go back to with CCB Rise. Um, obviously, for those who don't know, when you use a tier four or a tier five filament, you're given a suspect timer. This allows you to be engaged in high sec. One of the tactics we were seeing being used is if someone came out of a tier four, tier four or five site and there was somebody waiting for them, they would pop a tier one to three, go back in, and then they could wait out their timer safely. What's uh, the stance on that? Yeah, so we were working on uh, deciding how we were going to deal with that because we obviously didn't want that to be an easy way to avoid uh, the suspect timer. So we were talking about fiddling around with the timers to make it not possible. And before we could even decide what we were going to do, players figured out how to totally negate that 
uh, <laughs> problem by, uh, if you find a tier four or tier five filament, you don't want the person to go into another pocket when they come out. All you have to do is drop a deployable on their trace because you have to be a thousand kilometers away from any deployable to enter the abyss. So if you just drop a mobile depot outside their trace, they won't be able to use another one when they come out. So that's already yeah. been dealt with by the players. We probably still will do something so that you don't have to know that to get around it because it's a bit um, unintuitive, I guess, or you know, a bit obscure. Uh, but th it, it, that is an easy way to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty obscure, but like, you know, trust players to find you know the things that uh you guys didn't quite think of or didn't realize that were that could actually be used to uh help a situation yep they're pretty clever as a group and we've got uh whalegasms over there in chat asking if uh are these permanent in the game or is this a, a temporary thing and i think we know the answer but we'll give it to him. yeah they're absolutely permanent um and hopefully it grows you know hope we're wanting to expand it so hopefully it becomes kind of bigger and permanent <laughs> but yeah these are these are here to stay are I have you to guys wonder... planning on doing something to make sure that they don't go stale and uh open to just writing guides and uh, walkthroughs so something is always dynamically changing in these yeah i mean we obviously don't want them to just sit and and get stale um, but i don't know exactly how we'll deal with that it's uh <sighs> You know, it'd be awesome to have something that was more automatic that that kept it fresh, but we don't have a particular plan for that. Um, I think what's more likely is that we just follow up with kind of more dev investment into it, uh, at least in the sort of midterm or short term. Um, but we're we're going to be working on plans for how to approach that. You know, over the next really in the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about that a lot. So. Um, stay tuned, I guess, but we definitely don't want to let it just sit and rot. That would be very unfortunate. Hey, and I got a, a, little, a little short follow up that I know some people hear about. Are you guys uh, going to work on uh, the law? And is there more deeper stuff in the horizon for this uh, expansion? Yeah, I think actually this, in all the time I've been at CCP, this is the most excited about kind of supporting the lore and universe that that we've been um, in a long time. And there's a lot of stuff in motion to support what's there now and then plans to make sure we have really cool deep um, universe development happening over the next uh, couple of years. So I think for anyone interested in that side of things, it's a really good time to be an e-player. Um, we're kind of at, at multiple levels of the company, both within game design and then in the sort of um, kind of marketing layer as well as in the strategic layer there's just like more investment than usual in what's happening in terms of the universe and story so hopefully a lot more to come in that area yeah i have a high priority question that came to me in discord and it's long so I'm, right. gonna, I'm gonna read it to you guys okay so it says right now there are some questions about drops other than the amount of materials such as crystalline isotope 10 etc that drop the only benefit from deeper sites appears to be the depth or number of filaments you receive. There doesn't seem to be any difference in the drop rates for BPCs and weapons, or difference in the likelihood that industry materials will drop, i.e. it appears the percent chance that isotope 10 will drop is flat, even if the amount that drops varies by tier. Running tier five chaotic pockets can easily take dead space fittings and or very good multi-plasmoids results. Um, is this impression of drop chances accurate? And if so, are there plans to adjust that so that the rewards for deeper dives are more in line with the risk involved? How about that? <laughs> That's a good. By question. the way, I'll let the I'll let I'll let the guys guess who who, who submitted that question later. Lashana. No. Where, oh, duck. No. Horrendous. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> let rise. Basically. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. So. Good question, and I've been struggling a lot with how much to tell people about how the loot tables are set up. It's kind of, um, more fun to let people try and figure it out, but I know it's making people in some cases kind of nervous because it feels like this, uh, depending on how your luck runs, it feels like there isn't appropriate benefit for being at higher tier. Like it's possible to get empty cans at higher tiers, which 
feels super crappy. And uh, But, I mean, the most important thing to know is that there is massive benefits to running higher tiers. Um, the So the way the loot table in general works is that pretty much anything can drop in pretty much any difficulty. That's not totally 100% the case, but it's almost the case. And the chances just increase as you go up. And in some cases, they increase super significantly. So the step from three to four has some really big jumps in drop chance for certain things. And the chance for the jump from four to five also has some really big jumps in terms of drop chance for certain things. Um, on top of that, he, he's right that the, the drop chance is flat, but that the numbers, like the uh, average amount of the resources that drop per tier changes pretty significantly. Um, and it's a little hard to like maybe feel how much that value increases because you have, you know, this, uh, you know, one in whatever. It's it's not every time you're getting a drop, so you don't get to compare super evenly from one dungeon to the next what the resource drop is. But those those amounts also increase pretty significantly as you go up in tier. And then on top of all of that, um, I would say we are going to follow up with a lot of balance to the loot table. I actually just put in a really big. Uh, kind of balance pass on the loot distribution that hopefully goes out Tuesday. Um, doing some stuff like making the chances of having totally empty cans a lot less common um, and changing some other things so that hopefully it uh, ba like balances the the resource faucet a little bit because right now it's a little out of whack and uh, some, some things like that. So yeah, I, yeah I'm not going to tell you, I guess, m too much more detail about how it's actually set up particularly, but I would just try to take comfort knowing that there is higher return. Whether or not it's worth the risk to run fives for the amount of increased return is something that'll take some more time to figure out, I think. Um, I don't actually know the answer to that. It depends a lot on where market prices end up falling for things like the high-end uh, mutaplasmids and um, the resources. So it'll take a bit for us to know about that, but um, just at least know that there is big gains the higher up you push. That's epic. Because yeah, I, I was gonna say you know uh, whether it's worth like the 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 calculations of whether it's actually worthwhile doing it or not depends entirely on like supply and demand, and that's something that you guys can't really uh, put your finger on or like hit the nail on the head with that like uh, when it comes to sort of you know designing it and putting it together um, because wow, I mean New Eden is a very dynamic place. Yeah, absolutely. One one way I mean setting up. Um, I did most of the design for the loot table, and it was a pretty overwhelming task because so much of it is uncomparable to other stuff uh, in the game. So figuring out what the expected value is from things that are coming out of the abyss, like especially the mutaplasmids, is really hard to guess. Um, but what we did sort of to hedge against that is we, we have three big channels of value that we can count on. Uh, we have mutaplasmids um, in one sort of channel. We have all the Tregolevian gear, which includes the resources needed to build it, as, long, uh, as well as the blueprints, um, all of that kind of in one channel. And then we also have blue loot. We have the Tregolevian survey data, which you just sell to NPCs for ISK as the like ultimate stopgap. And so after some time, when we get a sense, a uh, more clear sense for what the kind of expected value is for each of those channels, we can tweak things to uh, make it so that they're rewarding. And if we have to, we can just up the uh, survey data value or the amount of survey data drop to make sure that um, they're worth running. So hopefully long-term they're valuable no matter what, but um, it'll definitely be a bit before we have a clear idea of where that value comes from and how high that value is. If, mut if mutator value stays super high, then you know they could just, continue to be really lucrative at the high end for a long time. The one thing I'm waiting on is obviously you need to get the skills first before we can fly the ships. So effectively it's waiting for the skill prices to come down to get the ships into players' hands and then we start finding out if it's worth flying them in fleets. And then yeah. when that decision is made, I think then we're going to see this where the market truly sits. Yeah, because exactly. they are really fun for bashing structures. Right now, they're all the all, like everything in that kind of channel the the um, the ships, the guns, the materials needed to build them, the skill books, all of that is kind of still in a stage where there's so much scarcity that the price is artificially high. It's starting to come down a lot. I just sold um, earlier today a large like the battleship skill book, and it's down to not that much. I don't remember exactly, but it's under a hundred mil now, and it was you know staying at 
500 for the first two days or something. So, um, damn. Well, I imagine there's seeing... a lot of, I imagine there's a lot of uh, AT tournament, uh, sort of uh, AT uh, tournament teams that are like really, really wanting that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you make Vedmax four points and uh, <laughs> you create a lot of uh, demand from tournament people for all the precursor skills and stuff. Yeah, there's a little discussion in chat, uh, Arendus and the Imical, um, about uh, the term enchanting being used and a suggestion of uh, using mutaplasmosis instead, <laughs> because that just rolls off the tongue, but yeah. No, I think enchanting is pretty funny. I started using enchanting internally, too. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, and a special thanks to, what is it, CypherX? Uh, that says he has been watching this goon propaganda for uh, 28 months now. So thank you for that resub. We appreciate that. It's amazing to me. People have subbed for that long, right? It's crazy. It's good. No? It's all good. I do. I do. Uh, much appreciated. Anyway. Uh... Oh, I thought you had something. I thought you were about to say something. Oh, just, just a small uh, question to Rai. So now we've been rolling out... Uh successful feature after successful feature for quite a while. Do you have something in the pipe that's going to be as good for the next feature you're going to introduce? <laughs> uh, it's like, where can we go from yeah, here? Yeah, come on. Let's, you know, come on. Give us a little, <laughs> give us a little something here. Come Actually, on. it is really, I was noticing particularly with this release, because it was one of the least, I mean, we had some controversy heading into it, talking about the mutaplasmids, and there's still some of that around, but um, it was one of the most positive expansions when it landed that I've been part of in a while um, because I've been for the last couple of years doing a lot of monetization features, which are a lot more kind of tense. And um, it was so funny how when things go well, people just want more. Like day one, people are like, this is cool. When's there going to be more NPCs? When's there going to be multiplayer? When's there going to be, you know, and it's like there's so little time from successful release where people are just like happy to sit with what's there, which is totally understandable but it's funny I, I mean it's better still than uh people saying please revert this immediately but i i meant to i i meant to get the the do you have something in your doodling and on draft uh, things that you want to do as the next big thing uh, is anything in the works do you, do you have an idea of what you want to do next um there's there's a lot of stuff in the works um I'm most excited to figure out where we're going exactly with the uh, with the abyssal stuff. We know we're following up on that. We have some plans for how to do that, but we don't. We, you know, we we need to take in all the results from this release and adjust sort of our plans based on that. And that, I'm I'm really excited and interested to see where we land after all that's done. Um, but there's other stuff in in progress. Something I'm particularly pumped about, and actually, there's so many things we could do that um, I feel like. I'm nervous there won't be enough time to do all of it, but this this idea of having um, this precursor skill umbrella where we can do more interesting things with EVE combat, um, kind of under a totally new race, if you will, um, is super exciting to me. Uh, we have tons of ideas for different types of weapons uh, and different ship mechanics that uh, I wish we could just do all of right away, but I hope that continues being successful. We'll have to see how this goes. You know, like you said, because they're expensive now, we're not really getting a sense yet for um, how the new weapon's going to work out. But uh, that kind of area of work is really fun, uh, just to get to work on combat. I mean, that was always my favorite area of the game as a player. So it's it just feels like playing the game, basically, to get to work on that stuff, which is great. You said about metrics coming out on Tuesday. Is there a chance we can get any metrics of how many ships have entered the abyss in the first week and uh, we're obviously tracking how much has been killed right now currently around about the 2.5 trillion isk range <laughs> I keep that's a lot of isk uh yeah i have a couple i have some stats as of yesterday um they're not in a very pretty format but i mean i can say for instance that we're now at around 165,000 uh filaments activated uh, total since release, uh, which is pretty wild. Um, <laughs> uh, the vast majority of 
filaments is, may not be surprising. So as of Friday, um, there was, let's see, how does this work out? Let me, let me do a little Windows calculator action to make sure 70. So it's like... I, I know exactly what Eric was laughing at. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at Noisy Gamer in chat <laughs> because that's a phenomenal idea. That's a beautiful idea. It just shoots um, tinsel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. CCP Rise, I don't know if you're watching chat at all, so I don't know what the. I wasn't just was. that second, but. He's asking um, if the holiday version of the trig weapon will shoot silly string instead of lasers, and uh, so I thought that was pretty. It'd be cool. well, it's, it's, it's a good idea, right? The yeah. whole thing of utilizing this feature for all specific event stuff, that must be like obvious I and mean, just something that. Yep. The, that yeah. Do, that right? is something you will probably see before long. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I have not I have not played this and I, I really don't plan to to go into these things just about yet because there's so many other things in the game that I do. However, what's exciting to me as somebody who's not even going to plan on using the new feature, right, is the fact that other people who play the game are excited and enjoying it, right. Uh, so many times we, we have releases and things and people complain and they find something to complain about. It seems largely this is this is a very, very positive reception to a big game change, which is kind of cool to me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so that. far so good. I think that there's there's plenty of stuff. People are waiting. You know, it's I feel like right now people who are using the PVE part of it are having fun. That's like for sure and seems clear and we're really happy about that, but there's, you know, the, the parts of the feature that are the parts of the expansion that people were more nervous about, were like the enchanting, uh, for instance, and, and mm -hmm. then also the ships are still, it's going to be some time before we see what the long-term effect is. And, um, yeah, I agree. Enchanting. I agree, but, but and not, not that it'll be negative, just that, you know, we're, I feel like we're part way through to understanding the effect of the expansion, but it's going to be going to be a bit before we understand the full picture. Well, it's becoming a hallmark of, uh, of of CCP Rise to bring in something controversial. I do like so, I do like uh, a little drama in the community. It's fun. So, are, are you going to uh, make sure that could, could we ask you to put uh, uh, PI on uh, on a mobile console? Put PI on mobile console. Hmm? Or mobile platform, yeah. A mobile platform, so I can actually do my PI on my tablet. Yeah, that would be sweet. We. Uh, I don't. I, I shouldn't. I just shouldn't talk about it. I know we have uh, like a team of folks in the company somewhere working on mobile stuff, and I don't know much about it. So I think I'm just not going to say. But I love that idea. We. I know I've been part of conversations before about what kind of features would make sense to move over to mobile so that people could do them when they weren't at their PCs. But I don't know what the current state of those things are in the company. Yeah. See, Arendis is going to make it so I have to run these because everybody knows I don't like to figure out ship fits, but he's just going to put a doctrine out there for it, so I'll have to run them now. Yeah. <laughs> and Meadow3 wants, uh, wants us to ask if uh, there are any plans for expanding the Trevalian ships, ship tree, like destroyers, battlecruisers, capital ships, etc. Yep, there absolutely are. There you go. Ooh, I can't wait to see a, uh, a Doomsday version. <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, come on. <laughs> I well, just want to see. I just want to see the the trig dreadnought that's basically just Sauron's tower that just like slowly moves around the field. With the <laughs> that would be Bur awesome. Burning eye. The Seems problem cool. is then we'll have two towers. But rise, you have to you have to give us some some like uh, concept art leaks okay. at some point. Oh, uh, I, I I should let the artists do that. They deserve so much more credit anyway. They're killing it. I mean, this whole expansion visually is so unbelievable and uh you need to just get them out in front and showing their concepts and talking about what they're doing rather than doing it for them oh yeah, absolutely. The, scale and the size of some of the stuff that's now on the grids in there is just massive it's bonkers yeah yeah, yeah. it's so cool yeah, yeah there I are mean, times what... oh go ahead McLeod. go ahead i was just gonna say like the the first time i actually saw the venomac like oh my god that was just beautiful I can't wait till you guys see some of the stuff they're working on now. They're like this this whole expansion I think I don't know, it unlocked something. And I think the way people are thinking about visuals for Eve is changing a lot and uh, getting a lot more ambitious. So I think over the next year we might might get to show some even more incredible stuff. Yeah. Are you going to stop burning our graphics cards again? <laughs> I mean, 
Well, I, I'm not going to lie. I had to turn my settings down a little bit to run sites. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they did just up the overall requirements, right? For yeah. your PC. They, recommendation. They some... they to, what did they yeah. say the requirement? Well, I thought it was just a recommendation. recommendation. It's not, yeah. not the yeah. lowest, but the recommended. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. No, I, I you know, as much as we run in potato mode in big fleets and things like that, I got to tell you, I really enjoy running in full graphics mode when I do certain things just every once in a while, just to really enjoy what Eve looks like. I, I never run in potato mode, even in fleets, and it still runs fine. You well, have better cards than I do. Well, I'm talking about. Well, I just want to run faster. Yeah, I got you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to cut out tie dye just for me. By <laughs> it's, never gonna <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to work. It's never going to work. In my uh, mind, it works. Or an exploration version of this, because running into these sites and having the time to actually enjoy the scenario. Yeah. And remember, Miss Warren, just just speak up whenever you want to ask a question. You know, I know. I don't know if it's a little bit of a time delay. Like, I'll go to speak up, and then someone's already talking. Just uh, talk well, it's go really ahead. Like Take a little early. turn here. Ask some questions. Um, something I want to touch up on is um, for like the events and stuff we've had, because we've had a couple of events since the turn of the year: the Rogue Drawing, the Guardians Gala, the Hunt. We had about a period of testing for about a week on Sissy, whilst the Abyss we had about a month. Is that something we can look forward to for the major releases? Plenty of time for us to actually figure stuff out before it hits the live server? Um, I think we just, it varies depending on what kind of feature it is. Um, I think we, we really tried to carve out a lot of time for testing for this because we just needed the feedback. There was so much uh, NPC balance that needed to be played and um, adjusted that we reserved a lot more time on CC. Um, and I think that's, you know, I would I would continue to expect big bulks of time like that for major expansions, especially if they have a lot of new content that needs testing, um, whereas lighter stuff like the events, which are more predictable, we probably will keep it. Uh, shorter. It also depends on a lot of time. Uh, it's hard to see from you guys' perspective, but there's weird kind of competition for CC time. Like we'll have different um, kind of things going on at once that, um, and since we can only have one branch on CC at once, it, it can be tough to get time for everything. And if things line up badly, it can end up leading to shorter time than we want for certain features. But usually we try and plan that so the big releases like this one will have like a good a good bulk there for testing. I think it was a case where the um, conscious injection, the birthday celebration ones, I think it was on Sissy for about two days and then it went. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody was screaming, going, what do we actually do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that's just going to happen uh, if there's something else with a bigger priority that needs to go on or if the timing lines up against the release or there just isn't a big window. Um, also, they might be trying to, you know, with the event stuff, I, I don't, I'm not on the events team, so I don't know exactly what their thinking is, but it's possible that they just don't want people to figure it all out before, like, if they're pretty confident about the way the content works and the tech, they might not want a ton of time on CC for people to solve it before it goes on TQ. I'm not no, sure, no. though. It's understandable, though. Uh, no, but I mean, nobody would ever try and solve it on to that, would they? <laughs> I mean, if you get paid, paid to write about it, sure. <laughs> well, the thing about the thing about CC is always it's subject to change. Like it's always subject to sort of being, True. you know, for the changes to happen. So, like, I mean, even if you are able to figure out how to do certain sites, like on on Sissy, like it, that doesn't guarantee you like that that site when it goes live is going to be the same. Yeah, it was funny this this round for the expansion on CC. The uh, when we first put the expansion build on on Singularity, there was. Uh, placeholders for a whole bunch of stuff, placeholders for some of the NPC stuff, and the entire Abyss loot table was placeholder, and it was just kind of a, like, I made it in five minutes as a joke, and people thought it was real, and they were freaking out. I got so many, like, bug reports and stuff about finding stuff that didn't make sense, and it's, it's, all, <laughs> it's all changing. What I like is that we had a month of testing for um, the Abyss. We had all the dev blogs, all the things, the information's on the filament, and people were still going, what do you mean you only have 20 minutes to do this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of information. It was, it was, uh, I, I'm, 
I'm glad we were able to spend so much time in testing and do a lot of communication beforehand, but at the same time, I understand because it was uh, it's a totally different system than anything else, and there's a lot of really unique rules. I mean, it, it works quite a bit differently than any other type of dungeon, so uh, I mean, it's, it's my, nice people have taken to it pretty quickly, actually, considering how different it is. My advice was simply to just carry on doing as you're doing. Don't touch the abyss. Let everyone else die in a fire first and find out. And it was hilarious. Wait for the wiki. <laughs> yeah, Wikis I wonder how the uh, wiki I mean, will be up soon. I wonder how the guides will develop. I've been it's been uh fun to watch the guides that have come out so far, like Suetonius yesterday for tier fives where he's like it's no problem. You can run them consistently. You just need to spend 8 billion isk on your ship, and then you need to know exactly how to respond to every single spawn in the entire thing, which has different target calling for every situation. I'm like, I don't know how many people are going to feel confident about running fives based on this. It sounds pretty scary. Yeah, we... But that's we, basically a Sertonia guide, isn't it? I guess well, the, so, yeah. yeah. But the thing, I, the thing I like about that is the fact that 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 starts to actually become player skill rather than just, you know, the skill of being able to be in said ship, be able to use said guns and just pressing F1 and locking stuff up. It's actually mm -hmm. it's actually player skill rather than just, you know, skill at using uh, XYZ kind of uh, stuff in the game. Yeah, I mean, to back up what you're saying, anyone could be ratting in a super right now whilst on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shh, don't tell them. Are you, are you mining safe? I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. still playing shoot banks. I mean, I'm fairly certain I was hearing probing coming from Rise. <laughs> no, I, I closed everything so I could focus on talking. Okay, it must have been someone else. <laughs> That's because <laughs> he loves us. There, there have been a couple questions or, or a couple of people that have asked if the Drifter story is ever going to be expanded or we're going to find out more about them or anything. Um, any word on that or is that a, just a, I don't know? Uh, the safe thing to say is I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to, like, I, I wish uh, I had Delegate Zero or someone who's more in touch with the universe okay. and story team, but I, I mean, I, I would, I feel uh, like it's almost safe to say that there will be more because I know they're just working on a lot of universe development and I would be surprised if that wasn't part of it, but I don't know anything specific, so I can't okay. say for sure. Yeah, I mean, my 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 thoughts on it would be that yeah, there is going to be, but you know, the direction that it goes is always is going to be, you know, I imagine it's going to be heavy on their minds right now. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Alrighty, what else do we got? Any last questions? We're going to go for about another fourteen minutes or another fifteen minutes here. Um, so if anybody has any any final questions out there in chat, be sure to shoot them out there. We'll make sure they get relayed um, because we love an engaged chat and we like to uh, to share what they have in there. So or anybody here uh, on the panel, enchanting drones wow. and s enchanting s excavators. Yeah, that's never gonna happen, guys. See, okay. I, I said we should get these fighters uh, that shoot the triglavian weapons and just constantly have beam on. Be terrifying. Um, actually, be I kind of wanted, I kind of yeah. wanted to ask Rise, like, what did you think of the whole thing that Arendus uh, kind of postulated uh, in chat? The uh, the enchanting thing being a, basically a short form uh, way of saying the entropic charge aug augmented uh, nano transformation. <laughs> I think it was pretty cool. Yeah, we did that. That's what we did with uh, skins. Yeah. Uh... I don't know that we really want to draw extra attention to the idea of calling it enchanting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you went you went pretty big on the whole kind of BFG and all of that kind of stuff. So <laughs> yeah, there I, I, a little of that is. I mean, it's it can work really well, but yeah, 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 true. A little, a little bit on the um, on the serious side. Is it possible to do something like this on hulls? And have you actually considered that yet? It, it absolutely would be possible. I could make a mutator that changed uh, all the base ship attributes uh, really easily. Like, I could make that in five minutes. Um, I don't know if it's a good idea. I think we have to see how this how this goes and see whether or not people, you know, basically whether or not it has a good effect uh, 
just on the ecosystem or not because if people thought balance would get unpredictable and weird having it on modules uh having it on ships would be quite wacky it would start to get really hard to know what to expect um of anything in the game if we started letting people modify base attributes on ships but at the same time sounds super fun so i'm not sure we'll have to see um, it's definitely the... not on the list for next things to do. The next things we're doing with the Mutaplasmid stuff is just filling out a couple more module groups. Um, the variation for what drops right now is a little bit weak, so I'm hoping to, for instance, follow up um, in the next <clears throat> like official release, which I, th I don't remember when it is. Uh, late June, I think. Maybe early July, I can't remember. But um, is have uh, cat batteries and NOS in there. Will you uh, just, post that uh, on the forums uh, soon so we can actually uh, take a look at what actually is coming? Yeah, I mean, as soon as there's, uh, like, I'm still kind of in the final parts of design for it, but once we get that figured out, then, yeah, we'll have information posted. One of the big early criticisms was that if people were to mutate these um, items, they get really, really lucky, and then they'd be really much more powerful on the battlefield. Um, the reality at the moment I'm seeing is that you either brick it, which you lose all your money, you either get a m mediocre roll and it really doesn't do much, or you get incredibly lucky, it's really powerful, and then you've got to take a decision of, do you actually use this in a fleet combat? Yeah, the the really perfect, um, you know, crazy OP rolls are both going to be super expensive to make because of the amount of attempts it'll take and also they just plain won't be very common there isn't enough um high-end modules to use as the bases to get to those super high-end potential stats um very often at all in the game so yeah and it, you're right it's a tough decision once you have one you know it starts to turn into like a tournament ship type of thing if it's too good um i think what people what i what i found myself using it for so far and i think probably this will be really common is to just help solve little um, little issues on your ship, like um, like I just before this, you know, rolled like five or six large shield boosters for my Abyss Runner to get one with a little less power grid so that I could fit something. And so it gives you just like a little bit of extra customization to make fits work um, or to squeeze a little bit extra of, uh, power out. Like if you have a little power grid to spare and nothing to do with it, you roll some shield boosters, get one with a little extra boost amount um, against the variation you would have used, and maybe you get a power grid penalty, and that's, an, that's a fine trade-off. And I yeah. think that'll be a lot more common than these, like, god modules. I could see that, definitely. Because, uh, I mean, I know that in Initiative, uh, one of our fits for one of our fleet concepts um, actually is so tight on CPU that we use a storyline mod for it, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, if we could actually, you know, mutate uh you know regular versions uh like you know sort of uh, low cpu t1 versions of that to uh to be able to fit that would be absolutely excellent yeah totally and i think you know you've got to have the right module types for that to be available but it's not that hard to do and the decayed the the lower end um mutaplasmids are not super expensive right now they're sitting like at 10 mil ish and that'll probably keep coming down so you know you if you know you need to squeeze a little extra CPU out of a plate or something like that, you just grab 10 plates, spend 10 mil on mutaplasmids, and and roll a few until you hit the low CPU amount, and then you're all set. And I think that'll that'll be a much more common application of the system than than trying to get like you know some the god mod. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the the way I kind of saw it is like the 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 um the rarity of being able to you know basically roll a god mod essentially is going to be basically almost the same kind of uh same rarity of being able to actually you know hit a uh, an officer spawn so you know it's just yeah it's so like, common people... and at the same time too like i was watching uh this guy christopher wow was was rolling some really expensive modules the other night and it's actually just removing god modules from the system you know he's trying to roll he he tried a, an stml's extra large shield booster and he just turned it into a gist b type extra large shield booster by Ooh. torching the shield boost amount and so it's just removing super high end modules from the game oh jesus yeah it, it hurt you could tell <laughs> definitely see this as more pimping out uh ships for the abyss because you know you know exactly what, well, you kind of know what you want to fit for, and mm -hmm. 
in the abyss, you're kind of in your own little bit more of a safe spot, safe zone, if you know what you're doing. Right. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's actually uh, nice and probably going to be really common to use that as a way to to upgrade yourself into higher tiers, trying to roll upgrades to the stuff you're using, using the mutaplasmids you find. I can't wait for a, uh, you know, a, uh, someone dying in a, uh, in a tier five with an entirely, you know, super high kind of uh, mutaplasmided uh, ship. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already happened, but it certainly will if it hasn't. Well, we lost. There was a six billion, I think it was like a six billion esque Gila lost with by the Gila in the pod. I was going to say, like, you know, whoever whoever decided that it might be a good idea to, uh, you know, bulk buy a whole bunch of Gila BPCs is probably laughing their way to the bank right now. <laughs> yeah, they've. Uh... They're quite popular. They're, they're getting chewed up pretty quickly. I, I mean, producers have... in general, I, I think a lot of, I mean, we'll see, but there's so much um, extra consumption right now for a whole bunch of things. Like, I noticed just now that Kaldari Navy ham, uh, like, mm -hmm. uh, heavy salt missiles, are, the price is, like, insane. It's, like, 25 million to buy enough for two runs or something like that. Um, dead space modules are getting consumed at a super crazy rate because both of people dying in their hacks in the abyss and also because of people rolling them on mutaplasmids. So anyone who's out there like running sites to get dead space stuff or producing tech two stuff or getting LP for ammo and faction ships, like all of that should be going up in value because of all this new consumption. We might not have been putting up mandatory ESSs during our ratting operations. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's smart thinking. Because uh, I spent a lot of time on the, the abyss, and I just said to people, going, right, people are just going to be dying in the VNIs and Gila's and everything. We need everything. So we implemented man pretty much mandatory ESSs. Yep. So uh, Goonie DuPont out there says, uh, anybody have a guess on the average ISP per hour? Clearly he's a goon. Because <laughs> that's, the, that's the question, ISP per hour, right? That's all we care about. Um, I don't think the stabilized disc per hour is going to be really hard to tell. It's yeah. going to depend on how fast you can do them, uh, what tier you can do them at, and then if, you know what the market looks like for all the stuff that comes out. And the stuff that you get varies a bit depending on which uh, like environment type you do. So the disc per hour will vary by environment type and by difficulty pretty significantly. Um, so it's going to take some time, I think, for people to get a good feel for that. So I did I did a little bit this morning and comparing it to the higher end ratting operations. I enjoy it. Yeah, that's great. I mean, and for now, it's definitely worth it in terms of this for hour. The the market is still um, supporting pretty high prices, even for stuff like just the filament drops. You know, the filaments are selling for between 10 and 50 mil still, which means you have a really good chance of getting pretty high return on each run you do. Depends on the market, I guess, because in Dell, you'll find like tier 3s are cheaper than tier 2s, and the kinetic ones are uh, half half the price of the thermal ones, because the thermal one gives you that armor bonus. So as a Gila, I've just been running the kinetic ones. Yep. Yep. That The whole texture of that market is, is pretty interesting. There's huge variation in Gita as well, for the, like, depending on, by weather type and by difficulty. So, so I have a, I have a, a, a question unrelated to the, uh, to the expansion, uh, for you rise. Um, have you seen uh -huh. the new video by Solemn Decimus for his CSM? Well, I, actually, I wanted to ask that because I, I kind of wanted to yeah. ask something very, very related Go ahead. to that. I was kind of wondering because, because, uh, Manic Velocity does kind of, you know, has worked with CCP, you know, fairly closely on various different things, you know. You know, he's been a presenter on, you know, the, um, on stage on the, uh, um, you know, the CCP keynotes and stuff like that. Like, have you seen him about, like, recently? Well, seen yeah. who? Manic um, Velocity. Man Manic Velocity. Uh, no, he's... I mean, I haven't seen him since FanFest. Because I I've think we Monster. found out why he hasn't been around and people haven't seen him for a while. 
it's related to uh, right, it's related to Solon Decimus's new video that he just released for his uh, CSM campaign. I would highly recommend you watch that. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen it. Somebody want to link it in chat, actually? Because I just I found it already. Do you want me it, to watch it? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you can do, yeah. But you know, we did. We 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 started talking about it just before the show started, and I didn't have enough time to queue it up uh, for the show. Mm. However, um, anybody who has not seen, not that we endorse any particular CSM candidate here on Push the or, Talk, or, or, or any but, action that are shown in however, the video. However, but it's a funny video. <laughs> I mean, he, he said specifically that. Although, um, I think he needs to finish off that drywall in the garage. I mean. <laughs> well, I, I think I think he said in a, in a, in a chat that basically uh, Brisk had, like, raised the bar quite considerably. So he had to do something. And I think <laughs> he pulled it out of the bag there. Yeah, let me get a link for the, uh, for the folks in the. Uh, Definitely. In the, uh, it's in our links. I forgot, I forgot this in the links channel. I got it, I got it, I got it. There we go. For everybody to enjoy in chat, it's about a minute 45 or so, I think. Um, it is It is really funny. I always like, you know, this is one of the unique things I think about Eve for all of us to talk about as Rise watches that video. One of the unique things about Eve is the number of videos that we have, be it something that um, goons are putting out or any other group is putting out, musically inclined music videos, whatever, or, or videos like this for the CSM. Um, I did not see Briss's video if he put something out there, but I, I want to say that Briss is looking smashing on open comms in his Briss's series. video is the best and, ever made. Okay. Seriously, it is. The dude can tie a tie. It, it I mean, been perfect. And speaking yeah. of content creators, it is kind of uh, funny that uh, CCP Rise used to be a content creator when he was a player. So uh, it's very really fitting that we uh, talk about this topic, right? I guess. I guess. So, yeah, not that we're endorsing anybody in particular, but watch that video because I'm going to watch it again after I'm done. I'm just like, I, I, I dig e videos. I mean, it's, you know, the, the, that Thank you video. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When he when he when he pulls that off off of uh, Manic's mouth, it looks like that really did hurt. <laughs> He's got the guy. <laughs> oh, and I must say that I did actually love that full circle thing that you did at the presentation rise with the uh, uh, with the music choice for one of your videos. That was amazing. That was actually really fun uh, for me as well. It's uh, uh, felt felt cool to like I don't know think about. What, I mean, it's been just like such a weird journey. It was kind of a poetic moment, I guess, for me. It was cool. Total it was also user. cool to get to hang out. Like, we ended up hanging out with Base Hunter later, too. So it was like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, cool. fun weekends. Good fan fest. Quite surreal, right? I imagine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up uh, as we go here. CCP Rise, thank you very much for taking some time today, this morning, your time. Uh, to spend a little time with us and our audience and uh, and talk about this expansion. I think it was a fantastic expansion. Thanks. Yeah, cool. It was fun to talk. Uh, Great. I appreciate being here. And you're welcome back anytime. Anytime you want to come on a show, just shoot me an email. I'll actually answer it this time um, <laughs> when I'm not setting up the show, and, uh, and uh, we can have you on anytime. Um, anybody have any one last thing, or should we just... Uh, shoot into the outro and, and head away. I would away. love to see CCP Rise uh, actually go on Twitch or make a video of him doing the Triglavian stuff for us. That'd be pretty fun. Oh, We're yeah, going to do, you know, cool. uh, actually, one thing I can mention, tomorrow, um, CCP Guard's running like a two or three hour stream um, with, oh. with a whole bunch of stuff from us. And uh, part of that will be some devs running sites. So uh, it might not be me. I think I might be PVPing instead, but we'll see. But definitely check that out if you want to see some of us getting killed by our own content. Oh, wh oh, yeah. When is that again? Uh, It's a little later than this. I think it, I don't remember exactly, but it starts at, I don't know, like an hour or two from now. Uh, oh, tomorrow. okay. So on Sunday, uh, somewhere yeah. around maybe 1900 or 2000 Eve. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Watch, watch Just watch, uh, you know, Eve Online Twitter and stuff to, to get exact... Okay. times but definitely do that um and by the way i forgot to tell crispy penguins thank you for the sub appreciate that 
And as always, he's a fantastic penned member because we, we uh -huh. love penned members here on Push to Talk. Um, so uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Scythe, Caleb. Uh, I need clock. to do a sign language to newbie. There you go. That's for you, newbie. Yeah. And uh, about my hat. And, and Miss Warden, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for being here. And as already, always, you know, total newbie agitating in the uh, in the way that he does. We, we, we appreciate it. So thank you, everybody out in the audience. And we will see you next week. And stay tuned in about, about an hour and a half from now. We have the uh, Meta Show coming up as well with all the interesting stuff that uh, that team has to say. Uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you same time next week. See you, everyone. Later. Bye-bye. See you. ya.